Hi, my name is Carl, and welcome to a new episode of the Sim Racing Guide. I hope you all practiced your breaking points last week, because today we're going to go over how to improve your corner exits. As always, this video is divided into different skill groups, so feel free to jump to the part that is interesting to your skill group, or watch the whole video and get a reminder of the basics. Today, everything you need to know about throttle application. In the last episode, we saw everything that happens from the initial brake input all the way until you reach the apex. Today, we'll be looking at everything that happens after said apex. You've now reached the closest point to the inside of the corner, which means we're gonna start unwinding the wheel. Since you're untightening your racing line, this is gonna free up some additional grip that can be used for accelerating. Now, aggressive weight shifts are bad for a tire's grip, so just like we wanted to smoothly bleed off the brake in our previous episode, this time we want to smoothly accelerate when we come out of the corner. In a way, the throttle application curve is the mirror image of our brake pressure curve. This of course doesn't mean that you have to be excessively slow when applying the throttle, but much more that you need to apply it in a progressive manner. In short, don't jab at your accelerator as this will create weight shifting spikes, diminishing your overall grip levels. While you're applying the throttle and unwinding the wheel, make sure to keep focused on looking at that exit point. We discussed this already in the racing line episode, but I just wanted to mention again that you really need to focus on that to have the best corner exit. And as always, make sure to use all of the available track for maximum performance. Getting the right amount of throttle application can be a very tricky business. Don't put enough in and you're leaving a lot of time on the table. Too much and you can end up spinning the car around. This is what is known as oversteer. Alternatively, still putting in too much throttle application, your car might just end up all the way off the track at the exit, no matter how much throttle input you put in. This is what we know as understeer. In both cases, you try to accelerate too quickly when coming out of the corner, which created too much speed for your tire's grip to handle. Try to remember that next time you approach that specific corner and apply the throttle more gradually. I advise you to just take it easy, be cautious and gradually increase your speed, just like when we practiced braking. At the end of the day, spinning around for a full training session is not fun for anyone. To aid traction, some very smart people have created a system called Traction Control, which helps you apply smooth throttle application when coming out of the corner by cutting off engine power going to the tires. Although a very clever system, it is not without flaws. And for racing drivers, these are the worst kind of flaws. The traction control system will cost you lap time. This is because a computer will oftentimes be a lot more sensitive to tire slip than a human driver. This will cost you lap time at corner exit when you apply throttle too eagerly. When you're first starting out sim racing, it's understandable that you'll want to use some kind of traction control system to help you in the corners. I completely understand that the fact that you'll be spinning around if you apply too much throttle can be daunting for some of you guys. But then I would advise you to use cars that have a built-in traction control system rather than to depend on a game's traction control settings. This will give you at least a realistic expectation of what traction control feels like in real life. After all, a lot of real life racing series allow the use of traction control, so why wouldn't us sim racers be allowed to use it as well? A great positive about using real life traction control settings that are in the car is that you can much more easily decrease the amount of traction control over time as you get more comfortable with the car. In most racing cars, you can even adjust it on the fly if you map the right buttons to your wheel. Although using TC is technically always slower, that doesn't mean it's not useful. Less experienced drivers will often benefit from using TC to aid consistency in the race, and when driving in the rain, most if not all drivers will turn up the TC as it is often more reliable than the driver's own sensors in changeable conditions. In fact, when drivers are allowed to run TC, 
You'll often see pros use low values to help avoid spinning the tires in case they do make a mistake when applying the throttle too aggressively. The fact that some cars are designed with the use of DC in mind reduces the penalty for using it anyway. Whether you use a bit of TC or none at all, one thing is for certain. If you want to know how much throttle you need to use in a given corner, you'll need to watch your car's reaction to your inputs. Over and understeer are both results of you using too much throttle on exit. So watch out for these signs and try to remember that next time you go around and be a bit more conservative with that throttle pedal. Once you can use as little TC as required, you have a good understanding of your car's ability and you're using all of the available track width by focusing your vision on the right places, it's time to micromanage your inputs. Think consciously about what you're doing and remember every input you have on the car will affect your overall grip. If you take a sharper line, you'll be able to apply throttle less aggressively and vice versa. I always like to think that each tire has a certain number of resource points you can use up. Let's say each tire has 10 grip points you can use in a corner. If you turn very hard, then 8 out of those 10 points might be used for turning, only leaving you with 2 points for acceleration. Alternatively, if you have a much more shallow corner, then maybe 8 of those points are left for acceleration. Use more than 10 and your car spins around of course, but what I'm trying to say here is when you analyze what you did wrong or what you could do better, you always need to look at all your inputs together to understand the full picture. Like everything in life, if you want to get good at it, you will need a lot of practice. So make sure to practice your throttle technique before next Tuesday, as we're gonna delve deeper into how a car's built can change the way you drive it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel not to miss any episodes of the Sim Racing Guide. It's absolutely free, so why not do it? All the resources used in this video will be down in the description below, as well as some additional ones if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you space races in the next one. Goodbye.